What's up, everybody? What's going on? Yeah, good evening. Good evening. We got a so we got our our giveaway episode. I had somebody ask the other day if we had done this yet. They were like, "Man, when's it? What about the giveaway?" And I said, "Man, we got we we selected a winner. It was all a scam. It was a scam. <laughs> yeah, we we just completely planned this out. We we're like we." Because we said we would pay the travels for somebody to come here. And instead, we just had a local guy uh, that won. But no, we did not cheat. But we are joined by Michael Hazelrig, man. What's going on? What's up? How you doing? I'm doing just fine now. <laughs> yeah, what's everybody drinking? Uh, i am got the uh, Jim Beam Devil's Cut. Okay. So not my usual, but that's what I'm well, going I, with I, tonight. I say, it's becoming your usual. I've actually really, it's grown on me. It has grown on me quite a bit. All right. What about you, Michael? I got some of that Elijah Craig over there. Good deal. That's a good choice. What do you got? Some uh, chicken cock? You knew it. I knew it, man. I knew you liked the cock over there. Well, got well, the chicken y- y'all cock. know I was running late getting here. And so it, it was kind of like I was scrambling to get out the door. And I was like, all right, chicken cock. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> uh, so I don't need to think about it. That'll make Logan's night. It will. It will. I knew, I knew that's what you would have. Which I wasn't sure though, because you got the. I think you brought the little thing of Elijah Craig. I did. Well, yeah, I wanted to have one here, you know. Yeah. Usually, sometimes by the time we get through, I don't need to top it off again. So. Michael did not want the early timers. Man, you know, I, I actually poured some early times for somebody tonight. Is it early times, or early timer? Early times. Early times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I he he said that was just too high class for him. Well, I was part of the reason I was late is we had our office Christmas party. And, Somebody was wanting a mixer, a mixer, and I was like, "I got the one." They were like, "Which one do we use?" And I was like, "Yep, yep. I like I got that or old charter." You didn't give them the Havens Cove or whatever it is. Which one's that? Isn't that your like expensive Peyton oh, Manning uh, kind? Um, shoot, what is the uh, Sweet Haven? It's something no, Haven, it's ain't Cove, it? Uh, Sweet and Cove, Sweet, Sweet and Cove. Yeah. yeah, you didn't give them that hundred and something dollar bottle for mixing. No, no. <laughs> they're like, "What do we want to mix with?" I was like this one no. <laughs> yes like that's what it's made for but, yeah. it is yeah it's a mixer so um well, all right well before we get into the episode you know what to do hit that like button hit subscribe and uh share this with your friends if you're listening on spotify apple whatever leave us a rating and a review uh i gotta give them a man i gotta give people a pat on the back man we have been consistently picking up more and more reviews so they're yeah. still just keeping it going what's it's Part of the reason Michael's here. Yeah. It is. It is. It's the reason why my hair is super long. Your hair is Man, long. I, I get more and more people asking me. I guess, I guess that's a sign that it's looking ridiculous. No. Which, speaking of which, I, I need to kind of sweet talk your mom and seeing if she can cut it. I've told her that she's got to help help you out with the scullet. Because I can't walk into any other establishment where I don't know the <laughs> people. Which, which your mom has a very reputable establishment. Yeah. I'm not saying that. But it, so where I can be like, all right short kind of up front on the sides you got to leave it long in the back yeah man just tell her you're going for that 80s bad guy look and so well, that's what out. i tell everybody i'm like yeah I'm like if i get it to a ponytail i'll be like the perfect like 80s movie villain i i've actually so mine i can't do a full pl- a ponytail but i will say when we've been working out i've actually been putting it in a ponytail yeah. uh like kind of it's kind of like i feel like a samurai I was about to say, do you look like Steven Seagal? Kind of, because it's, uh, well, but see, mine's more of the samurai style because it's still down in the back because it's not all long enough yet. Yeah. So I can pull it back right here so the sides and the top are back, but the back is down. Maybe Keanu Reeves. Yeah, that's what I feel like. I feel like some Keanu Reeves there. Yeah. Well. So Michael said he might grow a skull it out. uh, (laughs) About that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it. It might make a comeback, you know. I mean, you, well, you might bring well, it back. Mullets definitely have come back. They have. I feel like a skull it ought to come back. Yeah, I'm just trying to hold on to what hair I have left. It, it, it's. <laughs> I can tell you, from my experience, Logan Logan can't relate, but no. it's uh, it's it's a losing battle. <laughs> <laughs> but Bobby Lee's very much like um, who's the singer? Is it not Bret Hart? I think it's Bret Hart from Poison or something that. He always wears the bandana, and he has really long hair. But he actually took his bandana off or something, and he is, like, completely bald up top. Well, that's Hulk Hogan. You know, he always yeah. has on the bandana. But uh, you can't tell. Like, if somebody saw you right now, they would have no clue that you, oh, yeah. you really well, don't have much on top. That's what I say. Like, when I have my hat on, like, I feel like I'm 25 again. Yeah. And then I take my hat <laughs> off, and I'm like, well, I look 55. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, go to agzaga.com. Coming up on Christmas. 
And uh, Michael's used it, getting his kids some. Sure Hopefully have. your daughter ain't listening. We don't want to spoil her Christmas. Ah, she won't pay attention. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, don't let her listen to this episode. Well, I, I've done the same. Um, I know you have too. It, uh, yeah, still plenty of time. Um, use that discount code Talk Dirt, all caps. Um, Ten percent off, free shipping. You have plenty of time to get toys in. They ship really fast. I, um, I actually placed another order. Let's see, what's today? Wednesday. Yeah. I guess I guess I placed it Monday Monday night. Uh, because they actually called me yesterday. I had a phone call. And it, was, it was a Missouri number. I'm like, I'll answer it. See who this is. And I had ordered some of their custom length water hoses. Gotcha. Um, because and it was really odd. And I don't know. And it, the for those of you that don't know, you need to go to the website and check it out. But they make the they have the Flexzilla water hoses, but they can make them in custom lengths. Um, and for uh, for our water hydrants and our water tanks for the cattle. Um, which I don't, you know, most of my cattle are water needed out of the creek or the pond, but yeah, like the ones up on, um, that are on feed and whatnot, we, we use float valves. And, uh, you know, the hydrants, you know, I only need like a foot, maybe two, three feet in some cases of hose. A lot of times, you know, I'm rigging up a hose with some clamps and whatnot, yeah. and, it, and it leaks a little bit, and, you know, I'm trying to use some cheap hose. So, like, I'm just going to go ahead and order one of those really good ones in just a super short length. And like I told, and she called me. She's like, "Is that what you meant to do?" She's like, "You want a two foot hose?" <clears throat> exactly. And I said, yeah. "I said actually." You were like, "I'm used to handling a two foot hose." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna go more with. I'm used to handling something a really short hose. <laughs> but, um, I was like, actually, one of them just make it 18 inches. I went even shorter because I was yeah. like, that they're literally. I mean, it's a hydrant is right there over the water tank. Dang, that I, is I, a little bitty hose. Which, and by the time you put the fittings and all on, I mean it, it's. For for such a short length of hose, like yeah, per foot you're paying a lot. But I told her yeah. I was like, you know, if this saves me from one, you know, blown hose and a water running for twelve hours before I find it, it's well worth the money. Um, it's still not not very expensive in the grand scheme of things. But I ordered that. Went ahead and ordered some bail net wrap. Hell, I've been preaching it right here. Like, why wait? Yeah. Right now, you can get the ten percent off. You can get the free shipping. Um, you know, it's good to. I know I'm going to yeah. need it. You know. You're barring something tragic happening to me now, me now in hay season, I'm going to need it. Um, i trying to think, what all else did I order? Um, yeah, th- those were the main things. Well, um, y'all go there, use eggs or use talk dirt, all one word, all caps. Yeah, the toys, the parts, the bail net wrap, whatever you need. Check it out. So I'm going to change the format real quick. So we normally do our made in USA thing. Uh, what is it? At the end. Yeah. yeah, but I, no, I, well, you, I thought you were about to say something. Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, we're about to do it right now. Okay. What, do I need to fire up? Sure. Cue him up. Cue him up. Man, we're going to get him on the board for next year. And this is a throw. This is a throwback to a company we've mentioned, but it's. I want to bring it up because it's like relevant. It. Oh, there, there he is. There he is, ready to go. Almost ready to go. All his glory. Start off with two words. Made in America. Two words. Made in America. All right, Michael. So, this is a company we've mentioned before, but like we hooked up with some swag. But man, this is a you got to check this out. So, y'all need to be watching on YouTube. That's right. So you can see what's going on here. But um, got him the an SE knife. I've mentioned it. I got one right here. Um, it's on the table with me every week. We said before, in case like a bad guy comes in, I could throw it at his throat or something. Oh man! But. Uh, obviously, they're made in the USA. Where are they made? Oh, man. Gallant, Alabama. Okay. Oh. I was going to say, I, I was thinking it was somewhere relatively close. I was about to say, I, I would not have said Alabama. Yeah. I, I would have. That's what the business card says. I don't know yeah. if it's actually yeah. made. No, I, I, yes. I, I was going to say, like, Washington or something. Well, like Oregon, I, you know? I'm so used to Montana Knife Company. Right. That I, I think guess that's why yeah. I was going to that region as well. Yeah. But Also, another great company. There's one of their knives over on that table, but... We hooked him up. And got your SE knife. I appreciate it. Did we're, you? So how, what you think, man? How's it look? It looks good. Did you see what is that? What is, uh, I can't remember the. Open. I was gonna say I can't remember the name of it. A zoo. This one. See, this one here is a bigger one. This is the Rowan. Um, that one there is a little more like manageable in size. I feel like. Just trying to balance everything. <laughs> oh, you can throw it on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Say less. <laughs> 
That is a good looking knife. See, y'all listening. We will do another giveaway. You never know what kind of cool stuff you might get when you I come need a on knife to open up the knife. You need a knife? Here's you an uh, SC knife to open it. Here's yeah. you one to. Yeah, that's only appropriate. We'll just use an SC to open the SC package. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. these are heavy duty knives, man. Yeah, They're, they are. Um, it, uh, yeah, that, that's a company. We. I said you highlighted that one before. Um, yeah. We said you, you gave your dad one for Christmas or something last year. I did. I got him an SC. It might be the same one as that one, actually. Yeah. What is that? What's the name on that one? A Zulu or something? Zulu? Rowan or a Zulu. Okay. That's what, it, yeah. Um, that's the one I got dad uh, last year for Christmas. Feels like a shark. Yeah. They're a good little skin of knife. Yeah. They're solid little knives, man. So there you go, man. SC knives. Uh, SC, uh, it's E S E E. I can't tell you their website offhand. Probably just you could Google SC knives and. Check them out. Made in the USA. Good dudes. Um, so, so Michael, man, there you go. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, all right. Well, I got to tell you a story real quick before we get in. So, I was telling them off air, I had a dead gum fiasco today. Uh, man, almost went south pretty quick. So, you mentioned blowing a line. Well, I've been out on the track home, and... I, I've grown to hate track hoes uh, completely. I hate them, and they're broke down all the time. And my deer has been having nonstop fuel issues. So I get out there, and the fuel filter was completely stopped up with, like, rust. So I change it. Well, there's a line that's blown on the boom, and uh, I'm just going to try to walk it. I get it cranked up, change fuel filters. We're good to go. I uh, am walking it to the truck, and the truck's about 400 yards away. And I'm, I'm having to walk towards it because I had to cross a ditch that I can't get a truck across. So I'm walking it to the truck. And the thing is running awesome now. So I'm like, I move a tree out of the way from a little push-up while I'm going there. When I pick it up and move it, a high-pressure line bl- like explodes um, on the boom. So now I've not only got one boom or one hydraulic hose leaking, this one straight up explodes and it is spraying oil like very high pressure all over the traco like just covering the traco and i i'm i'm like walking it trying to get it out of the spot that it's in so i can get it to where i can work on it and i finally get it over a little bit and i had to stop because it's just losing so much oil and i i set the boom down and I turn it off, and smoke is rolling up off of the, the back of the traco. And I thought it was steam, but it wasn't steam. It was actually on fire. And um, so I don't even have, I mean, hell, I guess I'm telling them myself, I don't have a fire extinguisher in this traco. And uh, I jump off, and I'm like, I run over there. I had a big jug of water, luckily. And uh, I was like, Cause I didn't realize it was on fire and I opened up the side door and I can see flames up in the motor bay and I'm like, holy shit. And so I, I dumped the water on it and that puts out some of it, but it's still going. So I ran, I had to, I grabbed two more jugs and there was a ditch with water in it out there, luckily. And I was filling them up, dousing it down. And I finally pretty sure I got the fire put out. I don't think it did any damage. I'm pretty sure it was just burning up off the manifold. Like, it was just all burning off the manifold. But um, I didn't notice any damage. But I left, and I was like, after that, I was like, I'm not coming back to work on this thing today. Just stay, I don't have the mental energy to do it. And uh, so I left. So I'll go back probably tomorrow, and hopefully it's not a burn-up piece of metal just laying there. I mean, I watched it for like 30 minutes after I had put – I mean, I filled up the water again. I was putting it on there. But uh, I called dad and I was like, damn, I just had some shit happen. And he was like, what? I told him about it. And he said, well, it will burn up. Uh, He said, I "I burn a bulldozer to the ground one time. He said, you know, I never believed because it's basically just metal. He's yeah, like, you wouldn't yeah, think say, it yeah. would burn, but he said <laughs> it will burn to the ground. He was like, I burn up a bulldozer <laughs> one time. And so knock on wood, when I left, it was not burned up, but yeah. damn near had a track of really catch on fire today. So that Ooh. was, that was interesting. Yeah. That sounds exciting. I had to run 
a uh, buddy of mine was calling me. He was like, man, what are you doing? I said, dude, I got a track on fire. And he was like, "Can you need to call me back. And I said, yes. <laughs> like, I, I, I can't believe you answered it. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. And, I, and I'm like, I was running to get the jugs of water. Cause it, and I was having to run about 200 yards at that point. Yeah, man, it was crazy. So this is why you need to be filming and, and putting this. Oh, it would have been prime. Yeah, that would yeah. have been prime, especially if I'd had, like, a chest. Is, like, if you're anything like me, like, when that's happening, the last thing I'm doing is cutting on the camera. No, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I... In fact, I'll all, I I have not trained myself to do the opposite. Like, I'll be like, cut that camera off. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, 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 that's what you need, to. Own. It is. It's, that's the gold. Like, if I had video, like, Traco catches on fire, that would have been a great video. Oh, yeah. And a good mm-hmm. one. So it's a, who's the idiot like deer hunter dude that burn up his F-50? that's a dumb Bomar. Um, and that and that I was talking to somebody it's kind of coincidental. I was talking to somebody about that today and I'm like, you have a hard time convincing me that wasn't completely staged. Like, yeah, he's like, like, Oh no, oh man, and just burns his truck. Like, to the just ground. for views. And I'm like, yeah. I hope his insurance company didn't give him a dime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Josh Bomar. Are you yeah. familiar with him? No. He's yeah. a they're complete Which, clout hunting which i gave them what they wanted because i watched that video that's yeah. literally the only video of theirs i've ever seen but and we're pulling a clay travis on them we're like hate sharing it now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're right yeah haters are, are what what makes them stronger but. yep yep um so yeah that's what yeah, y'all don't go watch that video do not watch it it's stupid um, but he, he completely burns that truck up on purpose <laughs> and it was like a platinum or something wasn't it, oh, it was like yeah it's like a ninety thousand dollar truck yeah um, yeah just an idiot so, all right, guys. Well, uh, like I say, we're joined with Michael today. And, um, Michael, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, uh, kind of your background. And um, and then we'll – you had a question, actually, but before we get into that, kind of lead up to, to what you do and what you've done. Well, uh, what, what do you all want to know? Man, just start from the beginning. You know, you Michael, you served in the military. Kind of gives I your did. background on that. I uh, did six years in the Navy. I was a hospital corpsman. I was greenside, so I was with the Marines. Yeah. I joined the Navy with the intention of never being on a ship. And I almost got away with it. But uh, I just got out three years ago, started doing electrical work on the side and helped my granddad out. Yeah. And then uh, I got a call back from the fire department. I'm like, for some reason, we want to hire you. <laughs> and so they took me on. <laughs> and uh, here I am. Yeah. Just finished paramedic school with uh, Brent. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. <laughs> yeah. no, no, Brent's good. No. Um, Man, all right, so explain a little bit to me because I'm, when I think of the Navy, I'm a typical non-military guy, you know, where my mind goes to the Navy SEALs. So, like, explain, how do you not, like, if I was to think of a non-Navy SEAL, I feel like you would be stuck on a ship. So how do you avoid getting stuck on a ship? By being sexier than the others, all right? <laughs> no, uh, for the longest time, actually, since the beginning of the hospital corps, the uh, Marines have never had their own medics. They've always relied on the Navy to provide hospital corpsmen. So uh, that's what we've done since, you know, World War Two, World War One, Korea. Yeah. Uh, there's always been a greenside corpsman to be, like the Army has combat medics with them and their line platoons. We have hospital corpsmen with the Marines. So we do everything that the Marines do just with a little sprinkle of medicine. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the Marines now... They're also, they have, they're, I guess, I mean, don't they have quite a bit of guys that are also on ships? I mean, aren't they deployed quite a bit on ships, too? Yeah, I mean, like, my deployment with the Marines, I was on a ship. Yeah. I mean, not for very long, but I was on a ship. Yeah. Because they go on the Mew, which is, you know, jargon for how they're going to deploy. But uh, not every Marine is, you know, on a ship all the time. There's yeah. Marines that have never seen a ship. Gotcha. Yeah. Do they... What's that like? I mean, how long were you at the ocean out there? Uh, We did what was called the Okie 500. So we just floated around the the island of Okinawa. We were supposed to go to the South China Sea and do interdiction ops because China was getting froggy. But uh, that didn't happen. We were also supposed to go to the Philippines because there was a strong concentration of ISIS. That didn't happen. Uh, Y'all were disappointed. Yeah, pretty much just anything you're told, just don't believe it until you see it. Like, we didn't (laughs) believe that we were going to go to Korea until we were leaving Korea. Yeah. Yeah. but I mean, we just float around for maybe at the most a month, if even that. So the best sleep I've ever got in my life to this day. Really? Oh yeah, just rocking back and forth. So you didn't? Did you get seasick any? No. Did they? Some of my guys did, but I didn't. Now, are you? Do you have to take care of them? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy, uh, 
His name was Quinn. He's from Kentucky. We uh, got on this little smaller boat. It's called a HSV, and that's what took us from the ship to Korea. So, uh, well, we got off the ship and got to Okinawa, then we got on that. But uh, this thing is zooming through the water. And so all the weight that it picks up, I mean, when you rock back and forth on a ship, it's, you know, subtle. You drop a roll of toilet paper and roll back and forth. How small is this thing? Like, what's kind of... It's not tiny. Yeah. Like, on the inside, it looks like three jet airliners bunched up together. Like, 100 foot long? I guess. I got a picture of it I can show you later. But uh, this thing, when it's moving, every little bit of weight, like, you were feeling it (laughs) tenfold. And this guy was on on the back of the boat. I mean, we called it the smoke deck because that's the only place that you could smoke. Yeah. And he's sitting there. It looked like he was on a on a honeymoon with his wife, and he just got into it in the wintertime. I mean, I mean yeah. he's just sitting there shivering. I was like, buddy, what's wrong with you? He's like, Dude, I, I can't keep anything down. It's like, what are you talking about? I gave you like four Dramamines before we left. Yeah. He's like, Dude, it's not working. And as soon as I said it's not working, he threw up four times in front of me. Good grief. Like, Dude, yeah. do so you have what, anything left to throw up? What do you do? <laughs> Pretty much just... Make sure he drinks water. I was going to say, do you have to, like, put him on an IV? I mean, this could have, so- but oral hydration is the best hydration anyway. Yeah. How long was that boat ride? Uh, that one was about 12 hours. Oh, gosh. 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 If I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, th- I thought yeah. it would be, like, 20 minutes. So, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dang. Damn. So he was that way the whole time? Oh, yeah. That's so bad. Ooh. That's miserable. Yeah. And it was cold on the outside, too. And, I mean, he didn't bring any hoodie or, you know, any of his cold weather gear with him. He's just sitting there freezing i was like dude just take my coat yeah at least God. yeah that sounds awful uh. <laughs> man i i feel like that would be i would i'd be freaking puking like i don't know I i've seen wood. that's something i've never experienced i've seen um, the dudes that would do the deep sea fishing yeah, and they'd get sick as hell when, and yeah. i've been out a, i mean I, not a bunch of times but you know numerous times like doing that sort of thing and like i'm just i don't know i just it has never bothered me but yeah yeah. and i know people that go and they're like man sometimes it'll happen and you don't expect it and it'll ruin your day (laughs) yeah that sounds terrible now on the i'm trying to think on the because i like i said i I don't know i know very little i guess on the when y'all are out doing the okie 500 thing is that are you able to see land, or are you far enough out you can't see land? No, you can't see anything. Yeah. Like, I would walk out, because, like, to get to the gym, you had to walk to the catwalks on the outside, and you'd walk out, and, I mean, it'd just be horizon. Yeah. Like, ocean, sky. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Did you have, did y'all experience, like, storms much? Nah. Not that I can remember. Yeah. I don't, I mean, if we did, I wasn't able to hear it. That's what the ocean is just, man, ocean scares me. I'm, like, not a fan of the ocean. It's the unknown. It's the unknown, yeah. and that is, man, it's just powerful. It's super powerful. You see some crazy videos. My Instagram, I guess, realizes that because the algorithms will show me, like, it'll be a ship going up, and the freaking wave is coming up way bigger. It's like some perfect storm-type uh, video, and the waves just completely come over the ship. Man, yeah, it. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a fan. It's not a fan. Yeah. So... It's- what do you think? I mean, would you you want to go? Would you be a seaman? You know, I, you already were at one point. <laughs> well, I, I, we I all, yes. Like, like the, the the yeah the. Um, Did you assume his gender? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is. Yeah, I say, I, I don't think like gender matters there, but uh, yeah, yeah. The, the ocean. I, I'm not. I'm not. Like yeah. I mean, I guess I'm apprehensive to an extent, but no, yeah. the, the ocean itself doesn't really bother me. I mean, I went on a cruise once. <laughs> yeah, man. See, I won't do a cruise. Really? Yeah. I won't well, do it. I, 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 I'm probably a little more apprehensive about doing one again now, but it's more about, you know, you hear about like the virus outbreaks. <laughs> like It's like the perfect place for something like that. You know, yeah. your stomach bugs and like the, the whole ship gets like quarantined or something like that. Yeah. And, um, I did one. It was something I seen your trip in high school. So hell, it was 20 some odd years ago 22 years ago yeah um it was fine i mean we had a good time um we tried to we were all 18 years old so we were trying to get our hands on alcohol and prostitutes i don't think there were any prostitutes on the <laughs> boat now we stopped in some places there were some prostitutes i'm pretty sure i think i actually um, heard some funny stories about some of that yeah i think yeah. my dad told because my, my parents went they were one of the, the parent you know kind of chaperones but uh yeah i don't know just the 
that as a whole wouldn't scare me away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the unknown the ocean factor itself too, wouldn't. Um, yeah. yeah. So would you do the James Cameron expedition and go like 35,000 feet deep? Not no. the Ocean Gate, but the James Cameron. Yeah. No. You wouldn't do that? What about you? Would you do that? I'd do it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I love shipwrecks. Like, that's something that I could entertain myself for hours on. on I Google. like watching them on YouTube. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I'd, I'd enjoy seeing somebody <laughs> else's uh, <laughs> footage of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I don't know. So, so tell us then, once you got out of the military, uh, so you're a firefighter now. Yeah. And uh, your grandpa, though, he farms. He does. So tell us a little bit about what he does and kind of how you help that out. Well, I mean, he started out when he was a... Uh, he was a kid with his dad, and I mean that was back before they had machinery. I mean they would use a, a mule and a breaking plow. Yeah. And uh, his dad sold the family farm, and he wishes that he never did. Obviously. Was it why? When did he sell it? Like I mean, was this back? Were they in a Way bad situation? I was even a sell. Yeah. Like to be fertilized. Like it. I couldn't tell you the year. It definitely started with. Did they just kind of hit a bad six. patch and have to sell, or just kind of? I think so. I mean, the way he describes it was, he thought that it was the best thing for him to do. Yeah. But I mean, that's how he got his experience, and then as he became an adult, he wanted to get back into it, so he started off again and bought the place that they live in now in Covington. Yeah. And uh, he's rented some land. He's you know owned some land. I mean, all in all, we don't farm a whole lot. I mean, it's very small, but. As somebody that wants to get started, it's a good piece of ground to, you know, start out with. Yeah. Or a good amount of ground to start out with. That's what what you were telling me when we were eating. Like that that's what and exactly what I told you. Like, dude, that's perfect. Like, you know, I've always said that fifty to fifty to a hundred acre range, I mean and, and right around in there, you know, if it's 150, 200, but I mean if somebody if you were like, Man, it's a thousand acres and I'm gonna start there, I'd be like, dude, that's dangerous, man. You're playing yeah. with fire. Yeah. Um, like so that that that's a good starting spot. And now like your grandpa, I mean, tell us a little bit about his practices. Like he's uh, no till, well, tillage, what's it? No till. I mean so, we, so yeah, I'm a back being, but row crop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. All uh, row crop. Yeah, he said, assume, he said I, it was a lot of pasture ground he converted into row crop, so to piss on those cattle farmers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, that's that, that is that is classic, you know the, Tipton County. Tipton County, <laughs> West Tennessee. Uh, yep, yeah, it is. I got well, and Shelby County, because I'm that ground that I'm converting some of the ground that I'm converting in uh, Shelby County was yeah, pasture I'm ground. I'm glad you got all those flat tires. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, now go ahead. Uh, well, we're, we're no-till. Uh, we plant with a 5,400 case. Yep. Soybean special. Tried and true. Oh, Contract yeah. everything out as far as spraying out yeah. to the co-op. And we harvest it up, no cover crops. I've tried to talk them into, you know, double cropping in some wheat. Yeah. Even if it's just me doing it so I can get some more experience on my own. But uh, you don't want to do it. Why not? His biggest excuse is, uh, oh, we got too many onions. And we can't get rid of the onions, which is false. There are ways to do it. We've yeah. got to hurt soybeans. I've asked the guy that rents my land. Yeah. I mean, he actually reached out to his own agronomist and was like, I got this answer for you. Here you go. Yeah. And I told him about it. And he was like, oh, well, okay. Well, then I feel like you – because, see, man, we've gone to – which we haven't grown wheat in uh, several years, which now I've gone to cover crops so much that I don't – I'm in contracts now on most of my ground and cover crops, so I don't I can't grow wheat. Um, but when we used to, man, we we would actually spread it and we would turbo till the ground, so you're tilling it up anyways. Yeah. We would and vertical tillage was real shallow, but we would turbo till it and then come in and spread. We'd have just a Helena or whatever, they'd come in and spread the wheat with us and then yeah, we'd like run the fertilizer spreader or, yep. or air seeder or uh what do you call it? Is it airs? Yeah. Yeah. And it, they would, they'd get that thing, um, they'd spread it out and we would, uh, we'd run the turbo till behind it real lightly. Yeah. And, uh, when it comes up and you know, spray it. So that would, that would take care of your onions. If yeah. you did tillage. Now, I mean, I, I mean, used to, we did it with a disc and a do all, but we've tried to get away from that. Yeah. Yeah. So does he have a disc and a do all still? He does. And so you could do it the old school way like that. They just don't ever want to listen to anything that I have to say. <laughs> so if you want to talk to him, go for it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking to the older generation, like, trust me. You're yeah. preaching to the choir, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm in business with my dad. 
uh, and my brother. And yeah, we just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's kind of gotten to the point where if we want to do something, we just do it. You know, yeah. it's better to what's the, the beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. well I mean, you see what I had to do. I mean, I just finally had to start my own operation. Right, right, right yeah. <laughs> yeah. But and that's, yeah, I'm kind of the same way because it's. Yeah, with the cattle thing. Now, I can't you, tell you how many times they said, man, you can just take over the cattle. He's like, all right, well, let's do this. No, no, no. Yeah. We don't want, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I can see where this is going. Yeah. Well, so that, that's a that's a dilemma as old as time, I think. It is, and actually, I was just having this conversation with somebody the other day. Like this is this is actually kind of a struggle in the farming sector. Is uh, you know, like on one hand, it's awesome that there's eighty year olds still doing it. Yeah. Like that's cool. It's like man, this dude is. And I'm on a farming page on Facebook, and I've seen some where it'll be like a ninety five year old man. They'll be like, he just harvested his sixtieth, like crop of so-and-so i'm like that's pretty cool but like where it gets tricky is when you got the 80 year old that still calls all the shots and he doesn't allow any of the responsibility down the line yeah because then you see this i've I've seen this a couple times where like you got like an 80 year old and he he dies and his son will take over the operation and hell he's 60 he'll be 60 but he has no clue how to manage it. He's never been a part of the, the real decision making of it and the operation dissolves. Oh, it it I mean, we're not gonna name names or anything here, but I can just off the top of my head think of numerous outfits that, you know, went away because that the older generation, you know, naturally as we all do, dies. Yeah. And the next generation Either and maybe they never had had a desire, you know, to, to to be the man and run it, or maybe they just didn't. They were never groomed for that, you know. They yeah. were always just a just a hand, more or less. And uh, man, it, yeah, I, I think it's a real problem, and it's and it's a tough situation. I know I've you know just listened to other podcasts um, and whatnot, where because it, it, it it's sometimes some uncomfortable conversations to be had, but it's like. And I can see both sides of it, um, where the older generation were like, well, I'm, you know what, why do we need to do succession planning? And then, like, me step out of the way and let you. You like, just want me to die. Well, yeah. Or they <laughs> yeah. say, you know, like, you know, well, I'm just going to die one day and it'll all be yours anyway, you know. And then, yeah. and then and which my point back to that is I was like, yeah, but that next generation would be better served with you handing over the reins to them. Yeah. And and maybe you step completely away, or maybe you still want to be involved daily, but you're just not the decision you maker. Yeah, but yeah. They can they can either turn and ask you, oh crap, the CPA you know said this, or the the seed salesman says this. What you're like, oh yeah yeah, well, I've never mentioned that to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but just little things. Yeah. Um, rather than us be like, oh shit, dad or granddad's dead now. We have no effing clue what to do here. Yeah. Um, like it's little simple situations, but we've never, never been in. And so, um, yeah, I, and again, even outside of the farmer world, just in being in business with my dad and my brother, like we, we've had that conversation many times where we're like, you know, dad's like, well, why, why do I want to, like, y'all don't need to buy me out or anything. Like, I'll just die. It'll be yours anyway. I'm like, well, you're right. You know, and that's probably easier for you to do it that way. But like, I don't want to be sitting around waiting on you to die. Number one, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. number two, you know, I mean, what if you live to be ninety-five? Like, yeah, I don't know. Let me do some math. But uh, if he it's lives 20, to be ninety-five, twenty-four years, well, or he's, twenty-five, he's twenty-eight years older than me. So what's ninety-five minus twenty-eight? So well, that's so, diff- more difficult. S- than... Seventy-five would be twenty. Yeah, that means I'm in my late sixties and I still can't retire because yeah. because because. You're still calling all the shots, and you had retired. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't plan on you know. And, and, and my dad's like, "Oh, I ain't gonna live that long." And, it, and, <laughs> and we have a great relationship, but it's like, you know, two or three times a year it comes, and I'm just like, "Come on!" But it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's like talking to a wall sometimes. Yeah, like all right, well, we'll just have this conversation again one day, and it'll, it'll probably go just as far as it did this time. Did that when I when I bought uh, my first farm through Farm Credit, they they send you to this growing forward class. Yeah. You have two years to go. And I went and one of the things they did was this, they had a guy that was a succession planner. That's what he did. 
and he talks about how piss poor farmers are at secession oh, planning. That's a super common theme. Yeah. Sharky talks about it with people all the time. Yeah. He's like, they're terrible about it. And he said, uh, like, and well, he cause, was. Because most of them don't want to retire. Like, they're, no, they're, they're, they're going to retire when they're dead. Yeah. Like, they, they're going to go until they're dead. And it, and that's what he was like. One of the best things they can do is slowly turn the reins over a little yeah. at a time. And uh, that was what he said. He was like, man, if they can start slowly, like, we'll let this farm be, and this will be your farm. You know, like this 50 acre block, you're going to take care of it. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And, and just slowly let them figure it out. And yeah, like I said, it's much better when they're alive. Cause yeah, then you yeah. can ask them yeah, questions. Yeah. You can yeah. Turn, and turn to them, ask questions, pick up phone, ask question, whatever. Well, he was, he was like, this guy would come out and he would meet with you and like your dad and all them. And, uh, I'd come back from that, me and Marcy. And I told dad and them dad and my mom I was like, this guy, it was called like Land and Legacy or Land of Legacy or something. And I was like, this guy will come out and help secession plan. I've never heard this story, but I know where this is going. Well, that's what, well, I, and I, I mean, my dad's like, we don't need a secession plan. And I was like, but dad, this just, this just helps everything go. And he's like, well, you just waiting on me to die. And I'm like, no, like, it, that's it, not. it's quite the opposite in my opinion. Like, yeah, because otherwise you are just waiting on them to die. Yeah. You're like, well, I can't. I'm literally the with what plan y'all want i can't do anything until you do die yeah. So, yeah it's like no to me it's completely the opposite yeah like, well and that's how it, it almost offended him that like i was no, it, trust it me, seemed trust like me, trust me been there <laughs> well and the I'm guy, there every day <laughs> <laughs> well that's what we just so the guy i never called him back and the guy was old i'm pretty sure he's probably dead by now um so that just went nowhere so well, yeah. go ahead so I was just, you know, and of course, all of us have a little bit of trouble, you know, probably to some extent, you know, dealing with our own mortality or, or and, uh, I mean, look, you're, we're going to die like that. Yeah. It's one of the few certainties in life. And I don't know, but anyway, yeah, we didn't mean to hijack the whole conversation. No, you're fine. <laughs> no. So what, I mean, give us the rundown of your question. Well, I mean. Every time I try to ask him, you know, what, what's the plan for when you finally decide to hang this up? You know, it just turns into changing the subject. Yeah. Like, right. he does not want to talk about it. Yeah. Well, like, like, he'll I, tell you on one hand, you know, I really appreciate you coming out. I really depend on you. And then you try to talk to him about, you know, ideas or, you know, maybe you should try and, like I was telling you earlier, he needs to get a new combine. He yeah. spent twice as much in repairs as what it would cost <laughs> to get a better shape combine, yeah. right? He don't want to hear it. You know, I I just don't know where to go. Yeah. You know. Well, and, and things like that are hard because, because, I mean, how many times do you hear it? Like, once you finally get them to, or they finally have to, and then six months later, like, oh, yeah, I can't believe I, I should have done that years ago. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. but, you know, whatever it's talking about. Um, and like y'all were saying, like, I'd love for him to, you know, be around when I get started on my own so that he yeah. could give me some insight. Dude, that, that's... Like dad and I, like I'm, I'm, I have my completely separate operation and I still will call him like a, a lot of times it'll be if something breaks or tears up because he's just got experience in that category. So I, I call him and I'll be like, this thing is doing this. And he'll be like, all right, you need to check this. Yeah. And then I can, I can usually dig into it from there. Um, but yeah, man, it, I mean, it's. It would be great, and I and I think because your grandpa, you said he's like eighty four, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, man, I I'm terrible at birthdays. I don't think I'll make it to eighty four. I don't feel like I got that. Bobby Lee probably will because his grandpa just was like a hundred. Um, I do not want to be that old. <laughs> he was three days shy of one hundred. Yeah, we'll just give it to him, man. It's a hundred. Um, oh yeah, he's he made it. Uh, but so I don't know, man. Like it would, and it to me, it'd be cool, like getting the farm. We'd like kind of side by side with your 84 year old grandpa yeah like that's neat and and dude if you could ever get him in like a newer combine he'd be like thinking he was in a cadillac you know like it'd be that or he'd just throw his hands up and be like i can't figure it out <laughs> yeah <laughs> let me get out yeah yeah if you put especially if you get one with like gps on yeah. it that'd probably really blow his mind yeah but that's yeah i can tell you just from similar experience that man that's yeah i don't know that i had have good advice for you because I don't know that I've had any more success than you. And it's, yeah, and it is, it's a, it can be a little bit of an uncomfortable conversation because it's like, 
you know, but it's. That was absolutely nerve wracking. And, and I've tried and I've, and, and kind of one of the approaches I've taken, and again, I don't know that this is good advice because it hasn't worked, but I'm like, if you care about the future of this <laughs> operation, let's, you know, because I understand to an extent, you know, and this may be a little bit selfish on their part, but they're like, well, when I'm gone, what, what is it, what do I care? You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, or, or yeah. you know, or, or, or even if, you know, it's set up and it's going to be all left to you even, um, but still, you're like, well, I'd rather succession plan before you're dead, you know, just so, because again, you can help me through some of those growing pains. Yeah. Um, they're like, well, I, well when I'm gone, what a, I can figure that out, you know, but I don't know. I can, um, no, I, I, I can tell you, I, I don't know. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in that category, but I, the more, and even like, even things outside of like farm, like succession, but just like your will, like, you you'll make it a whole lot easier on the people that are left behind when you have all that laid out yeah you know completely <clears throat> because even when you think oh they'll figure it out or, or you know it's you know, i'm not that important like i'm not doing anything but you know that like no no it, it'd be better if it if it took place while you were there to direct it and whatnot but yeah that's uh man i'm kind of the same like i don't know I, I mean, honestly, I think that you probably just got to have an uncom- uncomfortable conversation. And I mean, I'm, I, I'll try to live my life somewhat by the, uh, the old acronym or whatever it is of KISS, you know, keep it simple, stupid. And, uh, and I would almost just look at it that way. I'd be like, I mean, you know, that's something you want to do. You yeah. know, you don't, and you, you want to keep being a firefighter, but you want to do that. Like, I would almost just be like, look, Grandpa. I this I wanted to farm. You know, like I need to know Well yeah, and it's hard for you to plan. Yeah. You know, and and, and, and that's kinda of, again, I've I've tried to use that angle with some of that discussions <laughs> like like you know, I'm I'm thinking about my twenty year plan, my forty yeah. year plan like like I can't make a lot of those plans because I don't know. And uh yeah, man, it's basically I'm not much help. <laughs> <laughs> I might be discouraging you. I would just I think you just gotta more or less just be like I would explain your where you're coming from. Um, just the fact that, like I say, you, you want to do this. And I mean, it's kind of, like I said, I mean, if I looked at my own situation, I wanted to, I wanted to take on more responsibility and I, I wanted to do better. Like I wanted to, I wasn't making very much financially. And, um, I was like, I want to, I want more responsibility and I want more money. Like I want to be more successful and uh i also want to be able to call more shots and all that and and that just wasn't in the cards when in right. the operation and i kind of we i tried to have some of those conversations and they were unpleasant conversations and they like I said so I, must I, say, I know exactly how they went yeah i, I had them yeah I, i've had them yeah it's well that's what ultimately i mean like i said it just led it, me to get it, my own I, operation going I'll t- yeah. I, I try to be really open and i because I've had that part of it. I was like, I see your side of it, and I see where you're coming from, and I see why you don't understand why we feel that we. But I was like, but you got to also understand, like, and that, that's keep, what I keep going back to. I'm like, the future of this operation, the future of this business, because I mean, that's what a farm is. Yeah. Like, if you care about where it goes beyond, you know, your time on this earth, and, you know, you would like to think that um, I would imagine he probably w- would when he's gone would love nothing more than it to obviously stay in the family and, and that legacy to continue on for 10 more generations. Um, I think almost anybody would, you know, in that same situation would, would feel the same way. And, and that's kind of the angle I've tried to take. I mean, I don't know that I've been very successful. Um, it's like the odds of this, of, of it being successful for this next generation and the next one, I believe is a lot higher if we, work through some of the succession before we're at your funeral. Yeah. Like that's, that's my whole thing. It's like, I don't want to be at your funeral and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, Oh shit. Like I've got to do this and this and this, and I don't know this. And I need to call it. Like, I don't even know what they did there. Like, like, no, like, I yeah. want, you know, um, that's my, like my biggest you know, peeve about it. I guess you could say is, you know, I just don't want this to end. With him going in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know my uncle doesn't want to farm, or at least it's safe to assume. 
I know for a fact my dad doesn't. Yeah. So, I mean, the only other option is it either goes to me, and I'm up shit creek without a paddle. Because, I mean, if they were to hand it to me today, I'd be like, you're on your own. We're not going to help you. Yeah. We'd be bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, I'd rather him be around to guide me along, you know, and on the same note, I'd rather when he's gone, he doesn't have to worry about it never being an Azel rig. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Is that... I mean, have you, how bluntly have you tried to talk to him about it? Not that bluntly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I still want him to call me to come help. You know? Yeah. Which, yeah. of course, I, I don't know your specific situation, but I, I would, just from the outside looking in, I'd say, you know, if, if, if your dad and your uncle's generation, if they, if they definitely don't want to, I think getting that established helps. Like, if they're like, yeah, you know, we don't, you know, we, we'd rather, yeah, we'd rather Michael be the one to take it over. Um, I think that's one step. Now, that's still, you know, you, you still got to get him to say, okay, yeah, yeah, it's probably time that I start really stepping back, letting him make, call the shots, and then, you know, I may interject, you know, where I feel like, oh, hey, we might not want to do that. Um, but, you know, we're – and, and I, I'm preaching to the choir here. You know, as farmers, you know, we're – we're definitely our own boss, you know. We're we're, we're control freaks. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> control enthusiast. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, you know, we we do things a certain way. I mean, I'm bad about even with my kids. Like, we're doing simple, stupid stuff. Be like, no, 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 you got to do it this way. And I, have to, I have to kind of train myself. Like, no, 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 let them do it and figure it out. Like, they might find out a better way, or they'll do it that way and then realize, hey, yeah, dad's way was actually better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, I'm preaching to the choir there, but yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I would almost wonder, trying to think in your scenario, what if you, what if you could find like twenty acres that was relatively close? You think he would? Would he let you use his equipment to harvest and plant it? I think he might, but I mean. If you know about the area, which I know you do, yeah, finding twenty acres is going to be very, very hard. Yeah, you're in a, you're in a. I mean, honestly, it's a freaking. I, I got a good buddy that farms out there, and I told him, I'm like, man, I don't envy the area you farm in, because like I, my farm that I had out there, it was kind of on the fringe part of it, and it, it's not very good ground, so like I wouldn't have to worry about it. But I've basically moved most of my operation away from that area. Because yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's just, south. it's ruthless. Like, it's just absolutely ruthless. Uh, talk to several guys, but saw the, I mean, you will get stabbed in the back out there. Is it's there terrible. response like one person? Do what? Is there response about one person? Well, there's one in particular that is the worst. <laughs> um, and I've, I've bitched about him on the show many times. And, uh, I mean, if people, people have put the pieces together. They know who I'm talking about. But, um, you know, it's there's quite a few out there that are pretty bad. Yeah. But uh well, if you got one that's kind of stirring the pot, you know, I, I guess you got the others that are yeah. like maybe not just, quite as big that feel like they've got to be just as cutthroat. Yeah. Yeah, um, that that area is terrible. But I guess that's what I mean. Man, I don't know. I mean, I I'm like, I feel like you gotta you gotta just pretty much you're either gonna have to have a very uncomfortable conversation. But and just and just lay it out there like, look, you know, and I would come from it. I mean, I don't, you haven't said anything that should piss them off because you're like, look, I just want to keep this going. Yeah. And if and like you said, the fact that basically the other two options don't want it or it ain't going to go to them, like it, like that's just not the option. I mean, you are the option or to sell, sell or whatever. And it's like, look, you know, I want to keep it going. Yeah, and I, and I would say again, just because I'm looking at. It, kind of from the situation that I'm in, um, you know, e even when, if they totally remove themselves from the equation, still getting to the point where, you know, you're really getting to, to call the shots and kind of learn on the job, you know, rather than waiting until he's gone. Um, that's still another, that, that's, that's challenge number two. And that's probably yeah. the bigger challenge. Um, it sounds like where you say, Hey, you know, I, I really like for you to, let me kind of slowly take the reins while you're still here. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's 
That's why it's such a dang good question. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I mean, when like, I... Y'all sound uncomfortable trying to give me advice. Imagine how I feel trying to think of oh, ways yeah. to do this on my own. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it is a... It's a sensitive well, it, topic that really, it, it really it, ought to not be, but yeah. it is. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's just, man, it... It's I, because I, you're dealing with death, I yeah, think. And, and they I don't can, want them to think that, you know, I'm waiting around for them to die. And that's where they almost feel like. Because, like I yeah. said, whenever whenever I, I had to have, when I tried to have that kind of, that was kind of, his response was like, well, he's waiting on me to die. And I'm like, no, I, I, like, well, I don't want you to die. Like, I want you to live a long now, time. Now, what we all need to do <laughs> like, is we all need to remember that we're having this conversation. And so, then tw- fifty so, years so or 30, whatever, thirty. 40, yeah, might, maybe fifty for you, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm ten years older, than you, eight <laughs> years older than you. Well, you're going to live to be ninety nine. Okay, maybe so. But hey, we, we don't we don't want to be those same dudes because you know good and well, and I know good and well our dads had the same problem. Yeah, you know, you know, but then they're they're the same way. You know, as they yeah. get to that age, so. Yeah, yeah. We can make it easier for our children and grandchildren if, if we uh, realize, hey, you know, one day I was, I was that, uh, I, I was that young guy. Marcy tells me that, like, when I would come home and I'd be like venting about something that happened, she'd be like, "I want you to remember this stuff so that when like Levi yeah. is is oh, trying exactly. to farm with you, you know, you don't you remember this and uh, you don't do the same thing to him." Well, what, what's funny though is is you know. I, I can hear my dad and your dad right now complaining about their dad. Yes. And yeah, it's like, it's been happening since the beginning of time. It is. Yeah. Adam was literally the only man that never had this problem. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah, man, it, it's tough. It is tough. But, uh, I mean, I think you're doing, you're, you're do, moving in the right direction, just helping. Yeah. I mean, because you're, you're letting oh, yeah. it be known that, you know, and, you're and there. And you're learning help. more Especially than you realize, this probably. Yeah. Um, you're picking up on more things than you would would probably realize. Um, Did you help during harvest? Do you help during planting? Do you yeah. just does he let you plant and stuff some? Yeah, I mean, usually he's in the cab with us, but uh, like during harvest, I actually got to cut by myself. Yeah, he was worried the entire time, but like I convinced him <laughs> to let me do it by myself. Yeah, and we're on our last field of harvest. And this field is notorious for having morning glories grow up in it. Yeah. And he didn't see any while they were growing when he normally has co op come out and spray. So he didn't have them come out and spray when they came up in full force. Oh, gosh. And so uh, we had stopped the day before, it was a Saturday. And they go to church. I would burst into flames, so I don't really go. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I convinced him, I was like, look, you go to church and you're worried about getting done, I'll come out and do it. Yeah. You know, he's like, uh, are you sure? I was like, yes, I'm sure. Please let me do this. Yeah. So I showed up, had a cup of coffee with him. And uh, he's like, are you sure you don't mind doing this? I was like, I am positive. Like, I am excited. Yeah. Let me do this. Yeah. So uh, I head out and I took his truck because he had all the, you know, the air compressor and everything with him. And so uh, I grabbed the keys and headed out. And I cleaned out the filters and everything, got everything ready to go and get started. And uh, I get started. Well, I told him I was going to start on the back end because it looked like it was more clear on yeah. that end. And sure enough, I got choked up. Well, they wrap around the auger? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I was smart this time. I actually brought like a little razor knife out, and I was just hacking them and ripping them out. But I got choked up pretty good. <laughs> and so I got the throat up. I was sitting there. I got the reels raised up as high as I can get it. I mean, I'm just yanking these things out. And, like, I'm I'm stuck. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm down for at least 20 minutes to get all these out. And I see this little white SUV roll up on the edge of the field. And it's right out there by the airport. And so uh, nobody's coming down in this field. Yeah. And my grandmother drives a white SUV, but it's a Ford and so, or a GMC. And so I see this white one come by, and I was like, crap. And they came to check on me before they went to church, and here I am already choked up. <laughs> yeah. So I'm frantically ripping them out. And like, I don't dip in front of them. I spit my dip out. I'm like rinsing my mouth out with a bottle of water out of <laughs> yeah. my pocket. I'm like, ah, crap, crap. And it's the guy that hauls for him. And he was, I've ne- I, I thought that he drove his semi to church because I've never seen him in anything else. <laughs> yeah. He's with his wife and they had stopped. And he just wanted to see how much we lack because it's our last field. Yeah. And he's the only guy that, you know, we're the only people that he hauls for now, I think. And uh, he's ready to get done. So he came out and he's like, man, you got choked up pretty good. I was like, man, I thought you were my grandmother. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we got done and I got it unchoked and kept on going. But he came out after church and he was like, man, I was worried. 
I was worried real bad. I figured I'd come out of church and I'd see you just wrapped up in the in the auger. You were like, I ain't had a bit of trouble. No. <laughs> yeah, that's what I told him. I was like, I ain't had no issues. And then I finally opened up. I was like, you know, the dude came out and saw me. You know, I was choked up. I thought it was Gwenny, but it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> but it never, so it never choked up the actual inside the combine. No, no. I, I think I hit the reverser maybe twice. Yeah. I mean, I was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that that's that's pretty good because uh, I've choked up. Thank God, I've never choked up my 680, but I choked my six. I had a 9770, and I choked it up pretty much from front all the way to the back one time in some beans, and it was just they were just really good beans, and it was I was cutting into the night. It was about nine o'clock, so the dew had set in, and I actually had to pull all the side shields off the like all of the internals of the combine. I had to take all that off, and I had to take channel locks and just grab as much as I could and just pull. And it was packed. It was like packed in like a rock. It was so hard in there. It took me probably an hour and a half or something to, to unclog this thing. You'd get in there. I'd dig it out a bunch and I'd, I'd just engage the separator and it would just kill the combine. It would just choke it dead. And, uh, oh, it took a while. So, so in the headers, that's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, that first time that I got choked up of the day, because I did get choked up. Yeah. More often. (laughs) <laughs> or more times throughout the day. But that first time, I wasn't even really paying attention to the right side of the header because I was cutting into my second pass. So yeah. I'm trying to keep the left side as close to the edge as possible. And uh, I just happened to look over, and I was like, real ain't spinning. And then I noticed the auger's not spinning either. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening right now? And I look, and I hit the reverser, nothing's happening. I was like, crap. Yeah. That's the worst I've ever had it. <laughs> so I hop out, and like, it was wedged. Like, there was a mound of them just wedged in there to where the auger had no clearance to spin. Yeah. Like, <sighs> well, it was probably, what time of day was it? It was probably about, at the earliest, it had to be about 940. All right, I was going to say, was there still a little bit of dew on? Probably. Yeah. I was say, man, you were pumped. You were too excited. <laughs> you had to yeah. get out there. Like, Tunnel vision. Yeah. yeah. That uh, yeah. the eleven o'clock, like eleven o'clock, is a lot of times when we have to start cutting beans. Just that do have to get well, off. I mean, of it. we had started early the, the last two days because we were already cutting in like ten percent moisture. Yeah, which was the lowest that we've ever had. Yeah, and no matter how long we waited, like it's just steadily going down. And so I I asked him that morning. I was like, "Do you want me to test and wait?" He goes, "No, you might as well just go ahead and cut them because I mean, if we get any lower, we're we're gonna get docked." Yeah, so dry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That all makes choking up a baler and just shearing a bolt sound not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, man, I I hope I never do that again, like I did on that ninety seven seventy. I I didn't think I was ever going to get that thing unclogged. I mean, I I did. I had to take off, and that was a situation. I called my dad because I I had I had moderately choked up a combine before, but nothing like that, and uh, and it was. Like, I didn't realize it. That's what got me was I, because the stuff, it was still taken in. Like, I didn't realize it. The header never clogged up. It was just the combine that clogged up. And I didn't realize it because it was at night. And I just happened to look, like, in the mirror, and nothing was coming out the back of the combine. And I, and then the alarms were like, you know, like, then everything went off. And I'm like, what the hell? And, yeah, when I, when I was like, I looked up in the back and it was just like a, it looked like a bale of hay inside the combine. And uh, that's when I, I did call dad and I was like, I have severely choked this thing up. I'm like, what do I need to do? And he was like, well, you open up your, like I opened up the concave as wide as it would go. And he was like, you can bump it and try. He was like, I'd hammer the RPMs down and just bump it. And oh, I mean, it wasn't even thinking about getting it out of there. So yeah, I had to dig it out for, for a long time. And uh, so, no, nah, man, that's good. Well, I, dude, I think you just keep kind of, I feel like you just keep kind of chipping away. I mean, I realize that the hard part is the fact, I mean, dude's 84 years old. So, I mean, obviously time is not on his side at yeah. this point. And so, you know, like I say, you want to be in a position where ideally you can do it and still get insight from him. Yeah. And, um, but I mean, obviously, like, I feel like you're doing the right stuff because you're showing him, like, you're interested. This is what you want to do. And um, I'd do the same come planting time. I'd be like, you know, why don't you let me jump in here and plant this field or something? like? And I think you're probably, 
you're probably learning more again. I know I said this a minute ago, more than you probably realize now. Yeah. Yeah. On, on the business side and the marketing and all that sort of thing, he, you know, he may st- still be doing, handling all that, but, um, you know, and, and, you know, God forbid something happened to him tomorrow, you know, and, and you were thrust into that spot, you know, reach out you know heck, yeah heck, we're, not, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're not we're not far away no um, yeah I, i'd be all. glad to try to help you out and um you know as, as cutthroat as it can be there's still good people out there um you know besides just us <laughs> <laughs> you know there's you know, a the, couple the, others yeah. there all right yeah there's, there was one other guy um, <laughs> if you can get a hold of him but now uh no there's other people around that are that are still good and and you know and be willing to help you out. Um, yeah, you do always. <laughs> Just because you do hear stories where people, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try to stay positive though. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, and and I, you know, baptism by fire works sometimes <laughs> that's my like that's just kind of my belief well, like I'm yeah. a baptism oh, yeah. by fire guy to, to some extent yeah yeah just just go for it you yeah know, you figure it out yeah it's like the green planting thing like i i did that the first year i ever did that i just did it because i ran out of time to spray and so i just planted green and then last year was similar in that aspect that i had sprayed and burned down some of it and then I was like, I think I might plant green on some of it. And I decided to do that. Well, then I just never went and sprayed the rest. And so I just planted like all of my beans green. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, it, well, and, so. and I can, I can hear your dad saying it because I've heard my dad say it. We're like, you do something like that. And he's gonna say, you can't do that. Yeah. That one, I can't tell you how many times, like with the cows and stuff, we may be like, well, how are you going to do that? Or who's going to help you? I'm like, I'm going to do it myself. You, you can't do that. Yeah. And then. Then he'll be like, "Did you get it done?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." Like, and and then afterwards he'll be like, "Talk to me like he knew all along that I, uh, I'm like, what? Like, no, you you, you were doubting me." And, yeah. And um, so I don't know. Yeah, just yeah. Sometimes yeah. you just gotta go for it, and 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 uh, I mean, obviously with some caution, you know. Yeah. You know, everything in life's a balance, but um, you gotta risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, that's what I say. Yeah. But yeah, man, I don't know, just. Uh, I don't know that we helped you out any on that. <laughs> <laughs> if you find out the, the like the the trick to to working through all that and it, and you get it all accomplished like in the next six months, two years, whatever, we're gonna have you back on to explain to us. <laughs> yeah, how so you, you can tell it. how you did. We've it. uncovered the secret. Yes, yeah, yeah, you have the secret. Yeah. Then you can probably quit farming and just write a book. Oh, you could, like, The Secret to or, or, Succession. Or, 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 or you can be like that, that old guy that's dead now that Logan Yeah, you to. could take his job. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that guy's dead by now. Yeah, um, you, you could travel around and be like, I have the secret to succession planning. Yeah, that's a <laughs> book title right planning there. Succession made simple. <laughs> that has to be a book title, <laughs> Secret to Succession. Like, is that if that's not a book title. I guarantee then, you there's been multiple books written with that sort of theme. Secret to because it's not unique to farming. Um, I mean, no, it's it's. it's yeah, I mean, it's not unique to this. Co- I mean, it literally is unique to to mankind. Yeah, there's but. an ebook, Secrets to Succession. There's a podcast, Secrets to Succession. Um, yeah, there's quite a bit. Uh, there's a bunch. There's actually a bunch of ebooks on that. It's well, the, yeah. you know, the old saying. Um, you know, when it comes to like multi generational businesses, and again, not just you know specific to farming but it's like they, they say the first generation rolls up their sleeves the second generation rolls down their sleeves and the third generation loses their sleeves yeah yeah um, yeah so yeah the first generation puts in all the hard work gets it going second generation um uh, you know is more the business minded you know yeah maybe growing it and then by the time it gets to third generation yeah they're just they're spoiled you know squandering you know it's it's too good of a deal or whatever yeah they they lose it all but, yep yeah I don't, I don't know how that really applies to anything we just said but, i don't either but it sounds good you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i just had to add that yeah. yeah well michael is there anything you'd like to close with no i mean i close with another drink though well there's well, uh, hey, there's we plenty. Got, we got plenty of drink but uh now yeah we, we've appre- we've appreciated you coming out and joining us um but i appreciate y'all's time yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope well, you'd like. Thank you for leaving a rating and a review. Hey, <laughs> that, that that's hey, 
this is a lesson to all you guys out there. Leave a rating or review. You might get to hang out with us. You might get to hang out with us. You might get to leave with some cool swag, a new knife. You don't ever know what we might throw your way. It took five minutes, and I got three hats, a T-shirt, and a knife. There you go. That's yep. right. And a free dinner. And a free dinner. Yep, that's right. Man, he got him some some uh, some little nuggy boneless wings, uh, so he got him some dinner. Where'd y'all go? JT's. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I, I missed out on all that. Yeah. Yep, we went to JT's. Told Logan I can do it any night. And then I texted him yesterday to remind him, or two days ago, and he's like, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> totally forgot that I had an office Christmas party. And it wasn't even that I had the office Christmas Michael party. Michael had to drive here from Montana to do this episode, <laughs> and Bobby Lee would have forgot. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, it wasn't even so bad. It was bad enough that it was our office Christmas party that I hadn't forgotten about, just had kind of forgotten about. But it, I was hosting it. I was going to say, he was the host. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Which I literally, my wife's like, I need you to do this and this. And like, literally, I, walk, I was off today. I, le- I walked out of the house at like 7 a.m. And I walked back inside at like 5.30 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Which it was, it, we had a, a, you know, a barbecue company catered it. And so it yeah. was, the food and all was taken care of. But it was like, all right, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, geez. Well, yeah. we don't have to do our Made in America segment. We already yeah. did that. SC Knives. SC Knives. What, E-S-E-E? E-S-E-E. Yeah, y'all yep. check them out. Uh-huh. And uh, like I say, go to agzaga.com, talk dirt, one word, all caps. All your all your tractor, farm, whatever Christmas toys you want, check them out. Um, they'll ship it to you fast. They'll ship it to you free if you use that discount code and with 10% off. Yep. All right, guys. Michael, thank you for joining us. Thank you all for having me. Yep. Y'all take care. Leave us a rating and a review. We'll catch you next week.